When you hear the word disciple, what is the first thing that comes to mind as a Christian, as a believer, or even just generally, when you hear the word disciple, what comes to mind? If the word follower is what comes to mind, yeah, you're in good company. That was me too. And while that is not necessarily a wrong answer or a wrong thing to think in regards to what the word disciple means, there is so much more to that word than we realize. Hello, my name is Toya Sio and I'd like to welcome you back to this space. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about what it really means to be a disciple of Christ. Stay tuned. So this whole concept or this revelation of what it means to be a disciple came about while I was in the shower about a week and a half ago. Um, as I shared with you guys in my previous video, I'm on my journey. Um, I'm being divinely aligned and one of the things that God is taking me back to doing is to going back to understand the true essential meaning of discipleship, of what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Um, background real quick, I got saved or my first um, encounter with Christ was in May 2004. I did not fully surrender my life until December 2007. So if we have to even backtrack or we have to count the amount of years that I've been on this journey with God now, whether you choose to count it from 20, 2007 or 2004, it's been a, a, a hot minute, okay? From 2007 to 2022, that's been 15 years. If you want to count it back all the way to 2004, that's been a total of about 18 years. So this has been a hot minute. And the truth is, as much as it's been a long journey, one thing I don't think I ever really got the chance to do, I wouldn't say not do it all, but do well, is truly be discipled. It's truly come to a place of understanding what it truly means to be a disciple. And I truly believe that this is very essential for any believer that comes into the body of Christ. It's one thing for you to, you know, receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and come to that place of walking with them. But it's another thing for you to now be taken to a place of actual discipleship versus just going into the world and proclaiming your faith. And I think that's where I kind of missed it. I would share more details on that again as I begin to share more of my Christian journey. But for now, as I said, I just been feeling like the Lord has been taking me back to that place, back to the middle, pretty much back to the basics. And I was in the shower and the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart and said, Toyo, see, what is a disciple? And of course, just as you guys probably said at the beginning of this video, my thought was, well, a disciple is a follower. And he's like, ah, yes, but is that all? Think of the word disciple, disciple. Oh, ding, 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 discipline. Okay. And that captured my interest. So I found myself getting out the shower, went back into the Bible, went online to look at definitions because you guys know I'm big on that. And I began to find out what the meaning of the word disciple is and also what the word discipline is. And when I looked it up, this is what disciple is defined as. A disciple is defined as someone who studies. That's it. Someone who studies. It is actually just derived from, I'm not sure if it's a Latin or Greek word, but the, the root word is disciples, which means student or pupil. For my fellow Nigerians, you know that students back home are called pupils, not students, right? Did I say that right? Pupils, pupils. You get the drift, P-U-P-I-L, okay? So to be a disciple means that you're a student, okay? You're someone who studies, you're a student of something. And for discipline, the root word for discipline, dig this, is disciple. So again, if you're exposed to Queen's English, you would hear often when somebody is studying a particular degree or a particular um, focus, right? Versus instead of asking, oh, what is your major? As we do in the States, they would ask you, what is your discipline? <laughs> That's what they would ask back at home in Nigeria. That's what they were asking in Britain and other um, English speaking countries. What is your discipline? So again, what are you studying? What is your area of focus? What is your area of, you know, of interest in studying? So pretty much while the word disciple is generally known as someone that is a follower, the definition is known as the word follower, the actual reality is there's, there are so many underlining layers that actually um, defines what that word follower is or, or leads to you arriving at that place of being a follower in your discipleship. I hope that makes sense. Stay with me. So. Before you can follow something or someone, right, you first have to learn of that thing, right? It's impossible for us to follow Christ if we don't learn of Christ. It's impossible for us to follow Christ if we don't 
understand him and come to a place of not of acquiring that intense in-depth knowledge as the Lord desires to pour into us. Because even if we try to follow without acquiring the knowledge, error is inevitable. And if we're going to be honest with ourselves, we are witnessing a lot of folks that are in error right now. Some are not even in error knowingly. Some are just simply in error because they are following without actually learning of God. Plain and simple. A lot of folks are in error because they are following without learning of the person they claim they want to follow or they claim to follow. They are following blindly. It's very important that we understand that studying comes first before application. If you don't learn how to implement the word, you cannot live out the word. In the book of Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Jesus says, come unto me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Well, I'm starting from 28, sorry. And then it says, take up my yoke and learn and learn from me. Some versions say learn of me because I am lowly and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, I've always read this scripture as, an, uh, I guess, a message or an, I've always interpreted this scripture as Christ just telling us to exchange our, you know, approach to life, our burdens, right? Or how we want to deal with our problems with his, his, like an exchange, kind of like, okay, you know what? Things are hard. Give, give what you're going through to me, but take mine. Yes, mine is still hard, but it's not as hard as yours. It's lighter. I don't know if that makes any sense. That was just my narrow minded in, you know, interpretation of it. But what Jesus is saying here, actually, again, is, first of all, let's first transform your mind, okay? You have to come and learn of me. When you learn of me and, I, and you receive the information of what it really means to be my disciple, right? Then it begins to transform your mind from, from the inside out. He says, because I am lowly and humble in heart. So he desires to pour that same spirit, to pour that same mindset into us as his disciples, and then he says, you will find rest for your souls. So a lot of us that claim to be followers, or a lot of us that are following Christ, you know, just in error, unfortunately, are restless. A lot of us are, you know, so overwhelmed and so anxious on a day-to-day -day basis simply because we are not implementing this formula, simply because we are not doing things this way. And so we struggle and we just don't understand why the Christian journey is just so much. Anybody? I, I know that that's been me. Sometimes I'm just like, God, I don't understand this. Life wasn't this hard before I came to Christ. And why is life so hard now? Right. And please understand, I'm not saying that this means that life would not be hard or that automatically you become immune and numb to the worries of life and issues of life. No. But what I'm saying is when you begin to learn of God and you begin to take upon you the, the nature of Christ himself, it becomes easier for you to rest in him. It transforms your perspective and how you navigate through your problems, how you see your problems, right? You don't, you don't longer see your problems from a human perspective. You begin to see things from an eternal perspective. You begin to see things from the perspective and the lenses of the Holy Spirit. And that's why he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Not because the problems or challenges that are going to come your way are going to be light or they're going to automatically disappear. No, but because you would no longer let them rest upon your shoulders. You will no longer carry those burdens, right? But rather you are able to now, you know, just drop them at the feet of God first and foremost. And also begin to operate in the mindset that these things are temporary. That these things are not even as important to what you have, which is you being a part of the body as a disciple of Christ. It begins to not be a distraction. That's another thing because our issues and our problems in life or our life journey sometimes, if we're not careful, can end up being a distraction to the ultimate goal of abiding in Christ and learning of him. So I learned three major errors that we as quote unquote followers and disciples may have been doing wrong. I know how I have. And that we need to, you know, I guess, realign ourselves back to doing it right. And the first is most of us do not study, yet we claim to be disciples. As I mentioned earlier, it's critical for you to learn of God in order for you to be able to follow God. Number two, most of us apply either what we've been fed from other people's interpretations of what the gospel is or what it means to be a disciple. Right. Or we are partially drawing from the word. 
So this is a two part, this is a twofold observation that I, that I, that I got from the Holy Spirit in regards to this particular era. One is some people won't even like, you know, question anything. If, for example, if your leader, your spiritual father, your pastor, you know, whomever you trust say something or passes on something to you in the name of the gospel, you just take it as the word without going back to the word. Again, this is not to say that you cannot be accountable to your leaders, but it's simply saying that you are still responsible for your salvation and for your walk, right? And unfortunately, because we have failed to really engage the word of God the way we should, we have actually allowed people to pass on man-made traditions on, into, into our lives and into the church in the name of the faith, right? And we've actually accepted those as the heart of God, when in reality, no, those things didn't come from the heart of God. They came from the heart of man, which is prone to error. The other part to it is where you are partially going into the word and just drawing out what you want to draw out, right? Where you are reading the word to appeal to what you want to get from the word versus allowing the word to read you. And the third part of this is not necessarily even an error. It's just to sum up the dangers of this, right? This, this practice is that this ultimately misrepresents what it means to be a disciple first and foremost to ourselves and all also to others that may even come along our way and unfortunately this just creates an endless vicious cycle within the body and it's God's desire for us to break that cycle <laughs> we got to break the cycle cycles that's how it keeps you in cycles thank you Jonathan McReynolds for that song see the enemy knows. He knows. He learns from your mistakes even when you don't. And that's how he keeps you in cycles. Those are some serious bars right there by the amazing Jonathan McReynolds. But yes, the enemy has pretty much mastered our use of man-made traditions and us presenting that as the word or gospel. And he has taken that and it's literally become so embedded into the fabric of what it means to be quote unquote a disciple that even when we do come across new folks that come into the body, we are actually passing on that false knowledge to them as well. And you know, when I hear a lot of people that tell me, Oh yeah, I became a born again Christian, but then I left the church because of ABCDE, it breaks my heart because nine times out of 10, it's usually because of misinformation. It's usually because of wrong, um, traditions being passed off as gospel. And lastly, unfortunately it's because that person failed to read their Bible. So again, you know, this is not to say that people live in the church is solely the responsibility of the leaders or maybe the, even the Christians that the folks in encountered because everyone is individually responsible for their life decisions. But I'm just saying that we need to play our part and play it well. And overall, we all individually need to go back to the basics and truly learn what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Okay, and that's it. I hope I kept this short and sweet. I hope this video blessed you. If it did, you know what to do. Meet me in the comments below. Um, if you need any more resources or you want any more feedback on tips on how to even go deeper into this subject, let me know as well. I'll be more than happy to share that with you. And of course, do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and join the big tribe. And until next time, thank you for doing it, God, with me. Oh, like I always say, I may not have all the answers. I may not know it all, but I am glad I know the one that does, and that's Christ Jesus above, and you can know him too. You have a wonderful, blessed, and fulfilled day. Bye-bye.